right, so call me to order at uh, 601. Life is good. Any motion on the minutes? Yeah. I'll move to approve the fruit. Also, okay. Any seconds? Any discussion? Are we, are we, we're taking a second review. Though. Okay. I generally trust Peter's judgment. Dubious character. You're on TV now, so I'm just <laughs> <laughs> statement or if the warrants are going around? Yes, they are. So, we have several warrants on a total of $60,430.59 uh, for various accounts. Uh, for your autograph. Uh, I did send out the results of operations, but I do have hard copies. Um, we are starting to monitor very closely um, what your uh, expenditures are um, moving forward at this point in time uh, and uh, looking to do a full blown analysis that I will have for you next month on what the projections are and where we stand with the various accounts so that uh, you have some sense of comfort as to where we're, we're ending, in, uh, ending the game. Um, there were a couple of things that um, we would ask about at the last meeting, one on page two with regard to curriculum development stipends. I did speak with Louise Law today, and um, I'm going to move some money out of another line to help cover that. Um, and then on page three, there was also a nature's classroom stipend that we need to, I think it was three, two or three or four, but, um, that we need to, um, Ben and I have talked about, it's on page four, pardon me. Um, ben and I have talked about the fact that we need to um, make a transfer to make that line whole as well. So we will be doing those two things within the next uh, month so that, that uh, when we come to you in February, those will be taken care of. Um, and like I say, other than that, it's just trying to project forward to the end of the year and to make sure that we're in a good place in, in all of your accounts. So. Just, just a couple of things. Um, sure. I wasn't sure what you just said. Mm -hmm. Was that a was that a sense of satisfaction about the current status of accounts, or just a promise to talk about them next month? Um, I I this is the time of the year when we go in and do a deep analysis. You're halfway through the year, right. starting to now project out to make sure that everything is in in you know where we expect it to end up, and if not, what adjustments we might need to make. So that's uh, a process that I've begun, and um, so that would be that would we know much more next time. Right. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing was that you, uh, we'd asked uh, uh, more than once about the overall adjustment that shows up in the budget. Uh, for example, on the final line on page six. Right. And as to whether there's an explanation <coughs> or correction for that. Um. At this point, there is not, and again, that's part of this whole analysis piece that I want to do. Why is that there, and what do we need to do to, to figure out how to make that, um, make sure that that's correct and in line with the time <coughs> of the So. Okay, I mean, you realize we first inquired about that in October. Mm -hmm. Okay. Understood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <coughs> Other questions? I'll take a minute to... No, my question was going to be about the 31.5. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> All right. In that case, moving on to public comment. Sure. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Jessica Corwin. I'm a Sunderland resident. So I'm a <coughs> parent. I'm on the school council. I'm also recovering from a concussion, so 
please forgive me when I struggle with my words. Uh, I just wanted to come tonight because I know it's a negotiations year. Um, I was really surprised last fall when Mass Live published an article about the 50 lowest paid um, teacher, di the 50 lowest paid districts in the state, and Sunderland is seventh from the bottom in average teacher salary out of 351 towns in the state. <coughs> Um, I happen to be a teacher in a neighboring district that's only a few slots higher than that in the town where I teach. Um, in the last 18 months, I've lost five teacher colleagues and one administrator, all of whom had, ser had served in the district for at least five years. We've, so we've now established, uh, they, they've all left for um, higher paying districts. Some of them said publicly that they had to because they could no longer afford to teach in the town where we were working together. Um, that has left, every time a teacher leaves, um, we're losing talent, we're losing institutional knowledge, and we're losing relationships. And those of us who are left behind, it's really had an impact on our morale when we know that our colleagues who don't have other family sources of income and wealth are really hurting and that we still have people who are actively looking for their jobs. I would hate to see Sunderland fall into the same trend that we are currently in. Uh, my family loves Sunderland Elementary. My daughter's excited to come to school every day. She's gotten incredible services here. Um, and so I'm here tonight just to voice my support of the teachers. I'm hoping to hear a bit tonight about the state of negotiations and sort of how it works in a regionalized district. I've taught in three Massachusetts school districts, but never a regionalized one. So I don't know how the different towns all get their voices heard in that process. So that's why I'm here. Um, I mean, Unfortunately, the way that the negotiations work, there's a, a gag order essentially that, that sort of super quiet. I mean, structurally speaking, we uh, we have the frontier, and they have a committee that negotiates with them, and we have the Union 38 collectively. All the towns get together and negotiate the elementary schools, and I'm not sure I'm at liberty to say much more. Than that. <coughs> yeah, I mean, so the the makeup of the negotiation teams are. Um, a school committee member from each of the four towns of the elementary schools because the, the, the union of the elementary schools Who and then a committee? what's that who represents them really? Hi. I don't know your name I'm sorry Greg you're, you're Greg okay yeah. Hi. and um, a um, select board person or their designee for um, all the towns as well so it's an eight person committee plus council and who's, um, which Sunderland select person uh, David Pierce thank you um, and David Pierce there, and so and then the uh, school side they have their their leadership from each of the schools. Mm -hmm. How they exactly <coughs> select it, but they any, anybody I think it's anybody who wants to join the committee and then their union leadership. So we've entered the negotiations with them. Um, we're really early in. We just kind of basically sit down ground rules and um, set up a meeting schedule. And so we actually on our agenda is to go to executive session tonight. Um, it's on all our it's on all our uh, agendas moving forward to, for any updates that the committee may want about where things are at. We haven't actually exchanged proposals, <coughs> so we're not doing that until there's a schedule. I have a schedule in my my notes here going out um, is until the thirtieth. So we haven't actually started doing that yet. Um, but that's kind of where it is. Um, there's not a lot of um, there isn't public involvement during the negotiations. As it is a, again, it's a closed door um, kind of thing, and we're gag order, I guess you could say, is, is how it works, but um, so that's kind of where it's at. Um, Teachers um, from all four towns are on the same contract, so they have the same um, step scale, step schedule. The only difference is the um, town's reimbursement for health insurance, and that's um, individual per town. Okay. Well, what's with the disparities in pay scale between Frontier and Union 38? How did that come about? I've looked at my own position, what I would be in each school, and it's a major difference. Right. Um, I'm going to make a guess here, even though I'm wearing uh, <coughs> your jacket. Um, I was going to say we're in a tie, but I'm not. Um, way back at the, the foundation, when the districts were created, it was created as a separate district, and high school teachers were being paid more than elementary school teachers. And you, you can find that in many districts, and that was the something before my, entry, before my entry in education, so as we can say before time, that the high school teachers um, were on a higher salary scale. Um, okay. And so I don't know, I mean, it, it goes into the, I guess, history of education and the politics of it happening there at that point in time too, so. Um, I just, I just wanna, I saw the, I'm Peter Gagarin. Uh, are you on the PTO? <coughs> yes. 
Look, I've been very much in admiration of the work the PTO does, and I gather that you do too, but I, I'm not that familiar. I just know you're very active and it's terrific. Um, I saw that same report about the 50 lowest uh, paying districts, and I was, I saw where Sunderland was, and I just want to add a couple of thoughts I had uh, about you know where the numbers come from or how they come up with the numbers. And one was I saw that there was a difference uh, between Sunderland and the other schools in our union, and yet they have the same labor contract. And for example, Conway was a couple thousand higher, I think, average per teacher. Um, and the only thing that I can assume that is, is that they have a greater percentage of their teachers at uh, a higher <laughs> step levels, okay, or higher education levels, and, 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 a, and a smaller number that are more recent or younger teachers or something like that. So to me, that's not something to put Sunderland down for, for being stingy. It's just the way that, uh, you know, people get paid more as they progress through the years and experience with the school, and, and uh, maybe Conway has more experienced teachers. Um, so and the, all, all of the Union 38 towns made the bottom 35. I understand. I, I was looking at that, but there was a difference between if you were 7th versus you were 25th or something like that. The other thing was, obviously, a couple more things. Um, cost of living around here is a lot less than it is around Boston. If a, if a, if a, if a school uh, in Boston makes the top, I mean, makes the bottom 50, I mean, I mean suburban Boston, okay? Boy, then you know something is wrong because the, the, the everything is so much more expensive over there. Um, third, and I I'm just guessing here. I don't know, but the number for Sunderland was based just on the elementary school because the district only covers Frontier. And as uh, Darius said, there has been a I don't know if it's a tradition or it has just been the way that that high school pay is higher than elementary school pay and so looking at Sunderland which just includes an elementary school is automatically going to shade the number lower than looking at a district such as Amherst where everything is uh, you know it's, it's a K through 12 district so again how much that matters I think it matters a little I don't know if it matters much I'm just tossing it out there as a possibility. I can tell you this from the data Frontier is also in the bottom 40 for the state right. and between Franklin and Hampshire County, there are 45 towns, so just the lower cost of living doesn't explain all of it. Away. I, I just I noticed it, but I wasn't, you know, really digging into it. But thank you for expressing your concerns. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and again, um, just for some perspective for the public too, when you're on the negotiating committee, you're between the your constituents people in the town who voted you in and the uh the teachers union and everybody tries to get to a workable relationship including all the other line items that go into the contract um if you've been around the town for a while you know that uh we've struggled occasionally to get an override passed in order to get adequate funding she knows. We, i actually yeah. helped she helped big time exactly. I believe. <laughs> Uh, we were successful last year, but uh, there were a number of failures to do that, you know, starting 2008. So uh, some of it is also the art of the possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and good on you for uh, getting out the grassroots stuff because uh, in order to keep the school and keep the students in here, the, the one thing that I try to explain to people too is uh, to the extent that we can keep the students in town, it actually saves us money. Whereas we had the, the disaster in 2008 where uh, we had to cut a lot of programs, students <laughs> fled, and it, it ends up not saving you money but costing you money. But yeah, we're definitely aware of that balance and trying to, on the one hand, be respectful of uh, the town's ability to pay mm -hmm. and also you know, creating a workable relationship with the, the teachers. I realize it's a tough spot to be in. Yeah. I'm here just for one time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also planning to be here long term if we need more overrides. <laughs> ready to work. We don't want to go that well too often. <laughs> Thanks. But yeah. But you know, communicating, like having people aware of um, you know, the the situations, the numbers, uh, and um, what it can mean, you know, and always kind of getting that out there is, is important. 
Yeah. Unfinished business. I don't believe we have any. All right, and new business. This is <laughs> this first one is one that I tacked on. Um, Peter does a f fantastic job scouring these uh, the financial sheets, which we get in PDF form. Like and this, mm -hmm. you're very kind to provide one uh, today. Um, got it by email this morning in PDF form. But one thing I'm wondering is, is this data available in spreadsheet form or could it be made that way? We can pull those um, reports in Excel, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> um, I, like, I remember you spotted one last week and I was saying to myself, uh, I spot data like this all the time when I can do it electronically. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a maintenance Project, you're wondering why are we so spent? Uh, we're only at a 50% point of the year, but we're more than 50% spent, right? That's the kind of thing that's very easy to pull up if I can uh, handle the spreadsheet. So the spreadsheets are very much longer than with all the fields. So <laughs> no, 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 not a problem. I, yeah. I can handle that. Yeah. But if that could be okay. made available, that'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Sure. Is it too much to ask? Could I still get my PDF one? Because I don't. Absolutely, you can get it both ways. And you can decide which one. I usually have to hide a lot of columns when I'm playing with it because it's just it's a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a very expensive thing. But yeah, they can be done. But everybody's going to get both. We're not going to do some. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 just. Yeah. 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 No, no. But, but but can we also say that you don't need to bring them on paper to the meeting because you know, the electrons are basically free, but the paper. It's, it's that's, in the way. Some committees ask for it in paper. Yeah. Some cases, I don't know yeah, what this committee it. wants, but I don't need it. <clears throat> I'm good about it. I'm good about it. Good. Good. All right. One less thing we have to do. Go okay. stand. Electronic only. And we like that. But that means you got to get them to us. You got to get them to us before we leave for the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. couple other thoughts um, and this is this is also for committee members um, I believe everyone on this committee ran unopposed is that a true statement yes yeah. yeah so all the Roberts rules and orders there's a lot of stuff that's uh, you know maybe built to keep a fist fight from breaking out in British Parliament and, uh, <laughs> yeah, is, is, is not a contentious group um, but we're, we're kind of nailed to these chairs and desks and there's no whiteboard and there's no way to put up anything on the screen that people can see mm -hmm. and i wanted to socialize the possibility of maybe i don't know whether it means meeting in a different room or but uh i work on teams all the time where we you know we'll collaborate and try to come up with something and having a board or, or being able to show something is uh is sometimes helpful so i'm seeing some nodding heads mm -hmm. that sound like something we could explore Possibly. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for a smart board, we do have one here. Okay. We could um, kind of reconfigure how these tables are set up. Um, but if that wouldn't work, you know, there's yeah. always a possibility in a classroom. I'm just not sure about um, video camera. Can you? I can you, see what I. If you give me a room, and as long as I have enough room, I can see what okay. I can do. If I, if I'm the person covering it, that yes. is. Yeah. Okay. Um. Are, are you looking for more than a smart board? Um, no, I would certainly, uh, certainly nothing more than a smart board. Okay. Yeah. So um, then this might be the place. Could um, be. And we would just have to reconfigure the, uh, the tables so, a little bit. If I'm reading you right, you're talking about creating a boardroom type of feel rather than a presentation to the one or two public that may come to the meeting and kind of more of a around with a board in a working kind of session. Yeah. Is that, well, well, I'm well, reading well, in, so to correct me if I'm wrong. But no, no, a, a little bit more of a team meeting feel, yeah. right? And uh, again, you wouldn't necessarily use it all the time, every time, but like when you read that uh, tribute to Guillermo, you know, his picture could be up or something. I mean, yeah. there's, there's just a, uh, and again, I think that this forum is really for deliberating stuff. So if we all are kind of nodding our heads that there's something interesting, we could probably take the conversation offline as that 
to how to best implement it. Or, sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. I just want to socialize that. If, okay. And it will be helpful as we go through the budget process. Yeah, yeah. Because I was the same. what I'm <laughs> building are linked is a linked workbook so <clears> that <throat> with a keystroke and a click of a mouse, I can make a change that will populate through and an entire workbook. Yeah. And you can see in real time what your budget impact is and what the changes might mean to you. Outstanding. So, yeah, something like that would be super. All right, so we'll, we'll figure that out, I guess. All right, um, substitute pay rate increases. All right, so um, this kind of came about <clears throat> as you, you you may have heard that the Massachusetts has raised the uh, minimum wage um, to $12 an, an hour. Um, our daily pay rate at, this, at the elementary level is for six and a half hours, which takes us just below minimum wage. Okay. Um, this kind of came to my attention through a flurry of exchanges between many of the schools in the Valley um, and finding that many of the schools are at $80 per day, we're at 75. When I say many, um, Gil Montague, Pioneer, the tech school, those ones, I, they're all higher, 80 or higher. Um, and so I moved this forward in an email to all of you that says, you know, basically we have to come to clients with, with the law. So on. The law does not necessarily mandate that public municipalities follow minimum wage. Um, however, we're already a couple steps down this road. I've learned this kind of afterwards, after having these conversations with colleagues and such. Um, but I, I believe that we should be paying our substitutes above minimum wage. Um, and so I'm sticking with my um, proposal here that I'm asking the school committee to raise from 75 to $80. It'll probably be a discussion that will be on a future agenda as the minimum wage is going to raise each year for, until 2022-23, where it'll be at $15 um, an hour. So it's something that we're gonna have to look at budget and how we wanna approach that long term. But I think short term, um, I'd like to keep all the, the schools the same. I think we should be above minimum wage um, and and also competitive with the other area schools, which is about $80 an hour. Yeah, and this is an issue we have to vote. You have to vote to approve, so, to change the change. Just a question. Reach. Just for the minutes, the, the $80 gets you above, <coughs> what's the minimum wage for 2019? <coughs> For the coming year that we're having to address right now, you said eleven. At January first, so right. that's so January first to change to twelve dollars an hour. Twelve dollars an hour, thanks. Correct. But yeah. it's eventually going to fifteen. Each each year, it's going to it's going to grow each year by one dollar. Um, I think it's twelve seventy five next year. Okay. And then there's a, there's a little scale online. Okay. 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 Um, but I'm just saying it is a, it's not a problem that we're one and done. It's something that this committee's going to have to think about okay. in the future. But I think it's the immediate. Um, Media first step that we should take. And so, and it's the one downside of when you have multiple committees trying to do the same thing. It kind of you know, so a little peer pressure from your your colleagues in other towns as well. But I, I think we're, it's the right direction. You know, there's discussion and you know, eventually vote. Yeah. <clears throat> we got a motion. Yeah, I'll make the motion to. Second. Yeah. Okay. Discussion. You sent her an email, I thought explained it well. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. Or even if we have a backdoor, I wouldn't want to secede from Massachusetts. Or... Yeah, and, and when I spoke to our school attorney, I was talking about something else and I brought it up. He says, well, it's a, most people don't know this, but you don't, he goes, I wouldn't advise. Yeah. You know, it's not that you're not sending the right message to your community and, um, you know, especially, you know, and so, it, so on and so forth. But you certainly, if you want to find that, if you want to use that loophole, I can give you information on that. And I said, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if we can get that. <laughs> low minimum wage for... That's how I felt. Right. Right. <clears throat> and the three other towns already approved it. Uh, Deerfield has approved it. Wheatley has approved it. And, and Frontier are, has approved it. And they just go into the 80? They're going to start. the 80, yep. Okay. And then, um, I, I mean, we're middle of a budget year. We're in the middle of a budget. I don't want to do a full, you know, we may want to look at whether or not we start the next year off at where it's going where it's going to be for the entire year. Mm. Um, and I can get information on that. Um, I'm not prepared tonight for that, but you know, so it's gonna, it's gonna change over in January again. So do we do a full year at the new rate? <coughs> um, do we commit to, you know, keeping above minimum wage and that kind of thing? And it, um, it may be something we, may we do collectively um, at the joint meeting in April, so that all the town, you know, maybe just kind of Give everybody the information ahead of time mm -hmm. so there's not a lot of discussion because those meetings can't go long, but just kind of where everybody's around together and we make some decisions that affects all of us because it does 
because it isn't there's a part that it isn't it puts you in a weird spot when three of the towns have already voted you know what i mean and and we've seen that on many kind of things from policies to whatever you're the last to vote yeah. you know good luck you know that kind of thing and it's not like you know you're just saying no for you and then you know so i think it is something that you know long term we also have to look at uh, as we look at other things we save certain things for joint meetings so that committees aren't put in a bind <clears throat> I forget, was there a ballpark on the, what this is likely to net out to increase for us in this fiscal? No, I don't have a net for, yeah. for some um, you know, not uh, talking a lot of money, I don't know what our, I mean, the Delta is five dollars a day. Five dollars on, right, right, on I mean, whatever we've, we're currently doing on for substitutes. So that's yeah. about it's an increase of about six to seven percent, <laughs> and um, right you know, now you've budgeted at seventy-five dollars a day. You've budgeted for three hundred and eighty-five days worth of substitutes for FY19 in regular. Order. You've budgeted for sixty-two days worth of subs in special order and five days for kindergarten. That's what it comes down to. Okay, so three seventy-five times. For the, for the right, yeah. Time yeah. five. Regular ed, um, so 385 days. 300. But part of the year is over. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. So I mean that, but that's what your budget amount at $75 a day. So less than $1,000. You're probably looking this year around 1000 bucks. 1000 bucks. okay. You can, yeah, yeah we're, we're almost halfway through, about 90 days left. Right. Yeah, 90 well, times five, okay. as you just said, two substitutes per day. You know, there's some of these, you know, average. Actually, we okay. use more than half the substitutes, so. So we, yeah. Maybe we're trying to use them when they were cheaper. Just wondering how much we might need yeah. smart find or whatever. Yeah. So it's in a, in a thousand or less. That doesn't sound too scary. I have to kind of deal with it. Yeah, and that's one of the things again we want to project out. Cool. It's been the substitute usage. Yeah. What are we thinking Correct. as we get towards the end of the year? Yep. At eighty dollars a day, what does that mean? That's yep. all part of this whole budget analysis. Okay. Hmm. That's it. Yeah. All in favor? Bye, both. Thank you. All right. Review of the 2018 NES DEC enrollment report. Yeah, that was this um, little green thing that you can pull up. So basically, um, NESDIC does a uh, <coughs> basically watching population trends up and down, population <coughs> ideas. So, you know, it's on. The, it's on here just so we take a minute to look at it. Um, my my notes on it. What did I do with it? Um, Sunderland's a tough, is a tough cookie to crack because of um, we have students that um, we have. We have a population that's not um, as stay put as some of the other of the other four towns. Due to the, you know the apartment complex, we have some families that are coming and going and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know. So I said it's kind of hard to project ahead. You know, these numbers aren't projecting a new apartment complex putting in. You know, they're just looking at basic trends and that kind of thing. And I've used this and I explained this to the other committees. When Frontier had its renovation in 98, they said that Frontier was projected to be over well over 1,000 students within the next 10 years. And I think they got close to 800 one year and that was about it. And so, um, so you know, they were running off this kind of report. So, but at the same time, it's good to kind of look at, um, you know, watching the and we're looking at almost a space issue here, and so we really do need to be looking at these numbers and what the birth rates are, and um, you know, uh, I think from the positive thing, you're looking at what our choice numbers are versus choice in. Um, that's interesting. It's interesting to see the homeschooled numbers. Um, you know, it's kind of it's a it's something that's been on the rise in the last I would say in the last ten years or so. More people are choosing the homeschool, not just in this district but in others. Um, the trend. Um, especially with online stuff and people trying to find other ways of doing things <clears throat> to say it in a positive way, I guess. Um, but, you know, we do need to kind of watch with the, how the numbers will adjust over the next few years because, you know, as Ben says, if we have to go to another classroom at any level outside of next year where we're looking at expanding by one, we got space issue. And so... And the, the numbers on this reflect in-town residents? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, NESDEC uses only because I used to work for them. Uh, they use what's known as the cohort survival method. So they look at 
birth rates trends over time, ins and outs, and try to do some projections based on that. And, um, So it was just a positive look at it. There's no, there's no profound statement coming from me other than that. <coughs> but, you know, we keep an eye on the different numbers to help us make decisions. And, yeah. and I think anything after a couple years out, it's been flatlined on every single one of yeah, the yeah. They're not really taking big risks to tell you that there's going to be because it's hard to. There's no data to show what's going to happen. You know, three years out. It just looks like it's fairly stable since 2008. There's a big drop after 2008. And it's just right, relatively right around yeah. that. Just under 300. Mm -hmm. But we still have a situation where we obviously know for this coming budget that we've only got one sixth grade class that's phasing out, but a couple of years further down the road, there's only going to be one fourth grade class phasing out. So as long as we keep putting two in at the front end and yeah. we do that a second time, that means that like three years from now, we can need two more classrooms than what we've got right now. Yeah. So. And it's tough to look at because of the population of Sunderland and um, you know young families moving into the different um, the different housing that's available. You know, you start looking at the number of births being you know in the last few years being around 24, 25. You know, how many classrooms is that? Well, right now that's 20. You know, is that one, two? You know, <coughs> a couple families moving in. That's definitely two. You know, that kind of thing. So it's very hard to project. And the numbers are that close to the line that's going to happen in right. five years when we have those kids enter kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but it's interesting to keep an eye on because if we had a huge spike, if we had a snowy winter, and there's a huge spike, you know, um, then that's something we'd have to plan for. <laughs> yes, we would, or scramble. Yeah. So, that was it. I didn't have anything okay. other than just yep. share. Pass information on. And presentation of the proposed FY20 budget. We are in the midst of a work in progress. So what I have to share with you tonight is your local numbers. I um, am working on a regional uh, budget at this particular point in time and don't have that totally complete. Um, but I'm just going to share with you the format um, that we use at TMS. Um, we believe in a very transparent um, way to present the budget so that you can uh, see what the numbers look like. Um, so you'll notice that there is a um, sort of pink column uh, that says FY20 budget all funds. What that represents is all expenses regardless of the funding source, whether it's um, the local town budget or it's some other funding source. You'll see right next to it a blue column that is the uh, local budget. Um, if you look, for example, down at classroom teachers, for example, you'll notice on the all funds budget, you'll see that uh, it's six hundred eighty-three thousand two hundred four dollars. But if you look, it's being offset by one hundred forty-eight six hundred four from choice. So the net to the town is five thirty-four six hundred. So we try to do this just. To make, to make you fully aware as well as the public, because it is the public's money, um, you know, of how much it really costs to educate a child in something, what are all the requisite funding sources, and then what's the net um, that you're looking at in terms of the town. So uh, I've gone through all of the salaries of the teachers at this point um, and done step increases. I have not done anything with um, cost of living adjustments because obviously you are in the middle of negotiations at this particular point in time. Same thing is true for instructional assistance. Um, what is on the back end of this is I have the current teacher salary scale and the current instructional assistance salary scale in there with macros in them. So if you said to me, what does percent X look like? Um, with a click of a key and a stroke of a mouse, it'll populate and it will push out so that you can immediately see the impact on the budget. Same thing with other kinds of expenses. There will be a total cover page that will have both the local and the regional budget within it so that if we make something, again, on, a, on the district page or on the, on the local page, again, it will populate back out to that full-blown um, thing. And so in live time, as you say to me, what would happen if we did this? 
I can make that happen and you can see it populated itself <coughs> and we can play out scenarios. So using the smart board to be able to project and, and mm -hmm. do that um, will be a great way to go through this process. Um, it is somewhat laborious to, <laughs> to do all of the links. The personnel is the worst part. That's over, so the rest of it should flow um, much more smoothly. The last um, few pages of the document is sort of the operations and maintenance. Um, this is, it's pretty much level funded right now. I'm meeting with um, Bob Lesko on Thursday um, with Mark, and so we will be talking about any adjustments, whether we're looking at the fuel, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. The um, budget for um, the transportation piece, um, we're looking at, um, you know, what's going to happen with uh, the bid, which should be going out by the end of this week. So we should know again by the time you come back in February um, to meet or pretty close to, we'll have um, you know some sense of where bids are at um, with regard to transportation. Some of the numbers are still a little bit fluid. So for example, in the uh, substitute teacher line, I did not account for the pay raise you just voted for them. So obviously I need to adjust that number based on, uh, for example, the regular ed in FY18, your expended amount was the equivalent of 423 days. You budgeted at 385. Um, you know, so what does something in that neighborhood, looking again at the trends that are happening this fiscal year, how many days of substitutes have we used, what's coming forward, um, so that we can project out a better number at the $80 amount. But again, that's pretty easy to do, throw a formula in the cell and we're good to go. So. Um, you know, so those kinds of things, um, you know, we're working on in terms of trying to shore everything up and get the regional piece in place. So, um, I'm thrilled to see the, um, the sources across the line items. Uh, um, that's awesome because we've had it like at the kind of summary level previously. Um, you know, which is better than nothing, mm -hmm. um, but it's really nice to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, and then there'll be another sheet where it was kind of like yeah. some of the detail in terms of where choice was being spent, but it wasn't in, in yeah. this look. I'm into um, one-stop shopping. Yeah, so. no, this is fantastic. Yeah. I, the, um, how far back do you have the data like this? The, and, the, and I'll tell you the reason I'm asking is because, I mean, I do think it's in, interesting to see over time um, both what we're spending in different areas, um, the change in the sources of support, you know, like mm -hmm. what, what stuff was that might have been coming grant funded or that we were, we were doing it out of choice or, you know, um, you know, other, other kinds of, you know, right. sources, um, you know, so and you know so to see the total that we're spending mm -hmm. um and the, how that changes in the sources so i don't know how, um how far like i mean this yeah i um i can go back within um the accounting software i think as far back as fy 16. Okay. i'd have to double check okay i think that's as far back as i can go Unwrapping all of the sources and where they were applied, I have discovered that those data live in a lot of different places. Right. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to do is, is bring to them bring home, home. So, okay. so that okay. um, it's for my own sanity, if nothing else, yeah. um, but just to make sure that all of those funding sources are in a single place so yeah. that we all understand okay. that. That's, yeah. that's, again, this is... Uh, a budget format that I've used on, um, you know, both sides of the desk with TMS, and I have to tell you, from my perspective, looking at it either as the budget creator or the budget approver, you know, mm -hmm. having this sort of feel of what the total picture is and where everything's coming from, yeah, um, just is was very helpful to my understanding of the budget because. Um, school finance is, is complex. It's, yep. it's yep. not uh, your checkbook. <laughs> right. Yeah, and you start to be more Well, if you just look at like mm -hmm. um, what's coming from the um, from the town, and you look at that over years, and just, geez, that took a big jump. You know mm -hmm. what's going on, and it, well, it might, it might just be that another source of funding right. is no longer available, and right. so it's coming. You know, all out of that. Or it might be that you were spending a lot of money sending kids out of district, now you have an in-house program, right. so There's the right. money you were spending there just got reallocated and kept kids 
here yeah. and and so looking at some of those kinds of things um, yeah I, I'm, I would like to be able to go back a little further as well I just knew I had to at least get um, yeah. the local budget for you um, tonight um, so that's uh, you know like I say this is a work in progress to, to pull this all off but again as we go through the thing and you want to ask a question I basically can plug something in and watch it and we can watch it populate and you can see what the impact is and you can say yeah, maybe not <laughs> or mm -hmm. yeah let's run with this so um, so this is a start um, it is not a complete picture as you probably are used to seeing but for again from our work perspective building a linked workbook means the adjustments can be made pretty quickly mm -hmm. um, they can be made at this table quite frankly so Just one question mm -hmm. um, when I'm looking at like last year and then yeah. Looking at what we have next year, is the FY19 blue column, would that be the equivalent of the FI, FY20 budget SES yes. proposed? So yeah. it's not the all funds. Right. Okay. Because right. some of them, it looks like it's a, a huge jump. Right. But I should be focusing on the second blue column. Yeah. Okay. Because again, that, that pink column is, you know, so when you're looking at, holy moly, we went from 467, 374 to 683, 204 in right, teacher yeah. salaries, and you go, oh, and then you look, oh, okay, well, that's been offset by $148,000, so, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so that gives you that, that uh, perspective. Um, Cause, oh, because in the total budget... It's not there. Right, the total budget would be, the, is again, that's what we're, that's the, the town funded. Right, 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 right. not, not right. total cost. Right. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. 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 So that SES budget is what we would call in budget lingo the LEA budget, the local education yep. agency budget. Yep. Um, okay. So, um, try not to throw around <laughs> too many acronyms, mm -hmm. but we are full of them in this okay. business. Um, so just some highlights um, of some changes in those uh, notes. Ben has been very good at, uh, gee, I'd like to fund one thing, so I've taken some money from somewhere else. Um, I don't know if you want to speak to any of those things in particular. I'm going to put you on the spot. But. Um, sure. I uh, looked at the trend for principal's office advertising. We never use that. We use School Spring and Indeed. Um, and so I took out $500 from that line item and moved... Um, the, those $500 to instructional materials early childhood. Um, we increased the principal's office copiers by $100. Um, the early childhood travel, we removed that and moved um, uh, another $100 to early childhood instructional materials. We increased library software by $50. We, um, and I noticed a, a small error here, Judy. Um, we want to increase the art line item, instructional materials, by $400. Um, and I think you just, we, we missed it by one column. Um, okay. So, yeah, you have um, $1,200 for instructional materials K. That, okay. that should read 1,000, and then the line yeah. below should be 1,200 for art. And um, so, like I said, the instructional materials, early childhood, we increased that by six hundred dollars. Five hundred from ad advertising, one hundred from other instructional early childhood travel. Um, increased general supplies by one thousand. We took. $1,000 out of the current Iveco line item, um, which is a uh, typically a um, uh, enrichment done by our sixth grade class. But after speaking with our teacher this year, we are going to be looking at um, other collaborative opportunities at no cost um, that can still provide the students with the same experience. The general SPED supplies, we increased by $500, and that uh, came from the remaining $500 from the Iveco line item. Other instructional software, 
increased from 18,833 to 19,000. Um, Scott Paul, uh, we had a admin meeting today and the there's been a huge influx of um, technology apps that are being used across the district so we're working on um, vetting what is uh, most useful and appropriate for students and, and teachers but with more um, with the like the high school going to one one to one um, and the many Chromebooks we have here and iPads, that it's definitely a need to always pay attention to that line item. The testing software, we've increased by $177 uh, to 2,500. We took $2,000 out of the psychologist <clears throat> professional services and added that 2,000 to the SPED testing um, evals line item to make a total of 7,300. Basically, um, we're paying for the same thing out of those two line items, so we just condensed it into one. Um, custodial temp services, that always seems to be overfunded. It's a uh, $5,000 line item. We took 2,000 out of that line item and moved it to custodial supplies and materials. Uh, if you'll notice, that's that one uh, line item below where FY18, we spent $11,489, um, budgeted 9000 for this year, and at this point, we're already at 8124 so we thought uh, that made sense. Custodial travel, um, we reimbursement for custodial travel, we're usually underfunded in that account. Um, and so we've increased that by $533, which is the money we took from the maintenance travel telephone account, which is never used. And all the other line items that I'm not commenting on are level funded. On the front page, too, in the teacher salary line, um, is requesting an extra classroom teacher, so that's another reason for the spike in there, as well as um, you know step increases. Again, it doesn't uh, afford for cost of living. The middle point of your salary scale is uh, about the ninth step on the master's level, so that's what I plugged that extra teacher in at uh, as well. Should I um, talk about the other um, staffing increases as well? Sure. That's fine. Great. So Judy mentioned the um, adding of one classroom teacher, one FTE. We are also looking at um, our SPED revolving account and the positions that are supported um, through the, uh, the tuition that's coming in for SPED revolving. Currently, we have um, on the general ledger 0.8. SLP salaries, and we'd like to move 0.2 um, of an SLP salary to the general ledger, so it, which would make it 1.0 FTE. And if you have any questions or if I'm unclear, um, please chime in. So, what, so, uh, what, what so is the rationale there? Or? Um, just to move money off of the SPED revolving, um, because that. Uh, that funding source isn't necessarily constant. Um, it's based off of student tuition. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, it, will, it shows the town uh, and paints a clear picture of the positions that are needed in this school. Mm -hmm. um, the positions that are supported through the uh, spend revolving account would be needed anyways. Um, right. So it's not just, um, they're not just there to support the students who are tuitioned in. For specialized programs, but, and then the, but the and the but the spend revolving the funds would be used against like would they? So yeah, so uh, we have two students moving out this year, um, and which we're all we're all aware of, and so there's going to be a decrease in that funding source. Okay, and um, we're going to be looking at ways we can offset that cost. So we're expecting the funding source to go down, and so we're looking at. Right, yeah. just exploring different avenues. Um, 
and that's just what I'm talking about. He, too. You know, he didn't say that at the beginning, but I think a lot of us were going to kind of knew what you were talking about. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a good explanation. We, okay. we have a um, part-time occupational therapist, um, and uh, Roberta Jaffe, uh, she's a long-time, very skilled educator. She's retiring at the end of the school year. Um, she started at Sunderland when our Substantially Separate Horizons program um, came on, mm -hmm. and she's looking to reduce her, her workload hours and uh, wants that to take place when our um, current cohort of students graduate from Sunderland. So she's going to be retiring. Um, we currently, uh, through both General Ledger and SPED Revolving, have 0.9 FTE for occupational therapists. So next year, we would, um, we're proposing uh, on the general ledger going from 0.6 to 1.0 for occupational therapists. So overall, it would be a 0.1 increase in FTE, but a 0.4 increase um, on the local budget for that position. We are adding a classroom um, homeroom with one sixth grade class leaving and two kindergarten classes coming in. So we're proposing to increase the art teachers um, FTE from 0.35 to 0.40, so two full days. Um, and she's our, and our art teacher, Catherine Schott, teaches five classes on Monday and seven classes on Thursday. So this would allow for two extra blocks on Monday afternoon. And she's a shared itinerant between Sunderland and Deerfield Elementary School. So, and you're in the, so that pretty solid of having the two kindergartens. Um, our projected I mean, numbers right now are at 25, yeah. which is too many, f and yeah. that's in-town residents, which is too many for a um, yeah. single kindergarten class. Yeah. Um, especially for kindergarten, we like to keep our numbers between 15 and 18. Um, yeah. 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 A lot of little bodies moving around, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'd have to, um, we'd have to extend the, ski, uh, <coughs> the school day during winter months uh, because of the zippers and boots. Yeah. Right, time for that. And then finally, a um, 1.0 uh, FTE increase for instructional assistance, which would also be moving one IA position off of SPED revolving to the local budget. Yeah. So that's so that's not an increase in positions that are at the school. It's just a Moving change the of the funding source. Yeah. So without the other things that you're still working on, I'm guessing you can't hazard a guess on, or can you on on. What kind of increase? I mean, it, you know, before our deliberations and all that get going, but like, well, we're what I, what I looked at here on your um, the school, not the maintenance side, because obviously we have to flush mm -hmm. out those numbers, but mm -hmm. it's about a three point two percent increase. increase. So I would hazard a guess we might be in that same ballpark okay. across the board. And again, that's without doing the salary yeah. increase business as well so right. those, those from are where we're, we're, we're going to throw a disclaimer because people get stuck at the first number that's ever said yeah, in these yeah. meetings yeah. so i want to say you were not I'm, prepared to give a solid number yeah, in any other any other group. i would and say just, in that neighborhood okay. so between zero and ten is the range and then you will right. find new, i just want I, I just know over time where oh this is a preliminary report don't take any notes and someone goes you said last but week so i just want to make sure yeah. Um, I was by trying was to give information like on order wanna... of magnitude, yeah. which, yeah. 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 So. I would say we'd be in that ballpark. And of course, the other unknowns right now is, um, you know, what's going to happen with Chapter 70. Um, the governor's budget, um, statutorily, a week from tomorrow, he's supposed to <laughs> put that out there, yeah. whether or not he's going to deal with the Foundation commi uh, Commission's report. Um, there's been a huge thrust on the part of the Superintendents Association to get the governor and the legislature to act. Um, we've gotten some analysis numbers for a few years down the road, uh, thanks to the collaborative that 
you know, say that Sunderland stands to get an increase in Chapter 70, mm -hmm. um, but how fast that comes and who, you know, how that all gets phased in is anybody's guess. And usually about this time, there's some tea leaf reading, and it's pretty quiet out there. Mm. So I have no idea what's what the governor's in is. It is thinking. an election year, which you know mm. we should make the most of. <laughs> but I mean, I think I think that's that's a you know a large part of the of the problem is usually you get a hint about where the governor is at. Right. It's it's been silent on Beacon Hill. I mm. I've heard nothing about. Mm where he thinks he's coming, where they think yeah. he's coming down on this. Yeah. So we'll have to wait for a week from tomorrow to see what comes out and then go from there. So if you had a couple of, I have one just more minor question sure. and one broad one. So like on the second, third, third page, mm -hmm. about halfway down testing software where there's a <laughs> 2223 last year, 2500 proposed, but nothing to <coughs> the local budget. And then there's nothing to offset it. Yeah, and this is probably, just, it's so preliminary that... Yeah, um, I don't know what happened. We lost a formula in there, so thank you for catching that. <laughs> huh. I will fix that right now. And then, um, and just broadly, when I, um, looking at the school choice numbers and the instructional assistance, because there's always concern about how we're spending the school choice and where we're at with it, and. When I look at the SPED aids, it's going from 89.5 last year to 45 this year. And I think we were trying to bring some of that onto the general budget, weren't we, over the last few years? Or that was a goal of ours? Yeah. So I'm just wondering why, if, um, why the reduction. Are you on the first page, Keith? Yeah, I'm back on the first page. Second to last down, instructional assistance. That there's a concern that we've been putting too much on school choice. Yeah, and again, that's that's part of this whole process is my being able to project what your ending balance, aka starting balance, is mm -hmm. going to be. Taking a look at what's coming in for revenue and trying to project out, and whether or not that's going to be sufficient enough funds, or do we need to think about something else? That's all part of this whole process. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for catching that other thing for me. Because that will be that that total of four or six. 66 on the choice. I mean, the numbers you have for choice are the same as we're using the current year, correct? Right. And uh, that, again, because I have not yep, been able yep, to project yep, that all right, up. Sure, so, yep. sure. Yep. Yep. <coughs> That's going to be the a bit challenging one. Yep. Not answering. And that, yeah, that um, on the third page, the testing software, that should read 2,500. And when you're looking at a change of choice, you have, you know, reading notes, you have, you have three, three choice in sixth grade. So, you know, doing a double class, it's, it's a good chance we'll at least get three right. for choice for next year. One could, you know, it'd be right. different if you, had, if you had like, you know, seven or eight going out, would be something we'd have to make a major adjustment. I think we should be able to get three. Right, but, the, but it still is a question of where are we going to end up this year? Is, right. is a major thing going into that that you can't look at just next year in a vacuum. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, my understanding here on this is that so what's missing here? What's missing is all of central office costs. Yes. Um, uh, what's missing is uh, uh, some sort of reasonable, some sort of attempt to project the other funds for next year. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so in a case like Keith asked about the SPED aids, which is they're under instructional assistance, mm -hmm. the fact that that's shown dropping from 89,000 to 45,000 doesn't indicate, what does that indicate? That doesn't indicate a plan, does it? So, I mean, again, how did that, how did that happen? Because I, don't, I, I, I can't, it's, it seems to me if you're trying to cut down the amount that's taken out of the special ed fund, then that number, if anything, would be going up. Right, and so for me, I'm now trying to unpack um, that amount of school choice money that's going against that, which has now dropped that from the 89 to 45. How did that happen? 
Obviously, so, that predates me, so. So this is still basically a work in progress. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. Very much. Okay. Uh, and then I'll just point out one thing. Sure. That it's just strictly mathematical thing. In the second page, mm -hmm. the next to last section, instructional services. Your totals on the bottom line of that section only reflect uh, summing up lines. <coughs> Uh, I think it's probably four, five, and six. Uh, you are absolutely correct. And I will fix so that just make right a now. note to fix that up. Yep, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Sometimes when you add cells, it doesn't always yep. up what you want yep. to add in there. So fixing it right now. Thank you for catching completed state um, next time you see it and then and, and will there be some uh, written list of changes that are built into this yes. so mm -hmm. we are not just sort of all trying to wrap our heads around a whole bunch of numbers that are floating around and yeah. not really doing it very mm -hmm. successfully yeah we'll have an hour to go with it as well mm -hmm. okay and this we could get in an excel form as well um yep mm -hmm. that'd be nice because then we can a little bit too. I mean, I think that we, you know, together in, uh, in a meeting, we can put these scenarios, like you said, but individually, if we wanted to look at some things, that would help. Mm -hmm. I have one more thing to add for today. Sure. List. The early childhood number looks really low for me, to me, for tuition coming in. Um, maybe just next time, details about where, we, where that came from. Which, which one are you referring to? So 30,000 coming from early childhood. That's just the chunk that is being used to offset that salary. So that's, that's also not the total the of the revenue. Right. That's, just, that's just the piece of it that's being used in okay. that way. But that's also the total listed on page three. Right, so that's down. the total offset. Because yeah. that's the only thing There's in terms of... Work. So we're missing the rest of where that money is. Well, in... in in the case of if you're going to use early childhood funds to pay, say, for supplies, and it's not funneling as an offset to the budget, we're not but going to pass it through it. this because that's just an extra step that makes things a little bit crazy. Okay. Um, but certainly, we can get to you what what other things are coming yeah, out of that account. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for I can, you know, a report for you on that as well. So. For FY in PDF and Excel. <laughs> For FY20, we're projecting eighty thousand um, dollars of parent tuition. Yeah, that seems. Um, and reasonable. we're going to be able to forward a balance of fifty-five thousand, um, and grant funding fifteen hundred, totaling one hundred thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars. So, we seem like we're in a very healthy place. Um, where we were when we first started this, we had a forwarded balance of about nine thousand. Right. So, well, I think that that's part of the big picture of paint. Yep. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. what, is so good shape. It, what is it like a what you're trying to have as a uh, a cushion for that forwarding balance? Uh, like, I, I think around fifty thousand. Fifty. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty healthy. So Just through discussions with Kim okay. McCarthy. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Um, yeah, I think if, 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 if possible to look at the, um, I mean, we can get it by, again, by going back to the old, to like the previous budget and things like that, but like that all funds, like you've got for the FY20 mm -hmm. proposed, but if we see that the all funds for like FY19, mm -hmm. yeah, least, I'd have and, to back into those numbers because of course that's not the way it was built. So, okay. Um, but okay. Mm -hmm. It's not that it can't be done. Okay. It just would take me a little bit of time to do it. Because so. otherwise, you know, it'll, it's going to... Yeah, once you get into this rhythm of, of this, then it makes a whole lot of sense. And then you can see, you know, the comparison all from year to year. Mm -hmm. And your LEA um, offset. Yeah, I mean, because it's want to look at both. I mean, certainly in, the, in yeah, the, the end, it's like what we're asking the town for. But at, at the same time, it's like, what are we spending? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and where are we getting it from? Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Thanks. All right. In that case, we're on to capital projects. Um, there was supposed to have been a meeting of the committee last Tuesday, and it got canceled for reasons I didn't need to know or whatever didn't, whatever didn't matter. But in any case, that uh, we've submitted, uh, I guess Darius or Bob Lesko have submitted the uh, request for the three projects we talked about and voted on at the last meeting. Um, I'll be attending all meetings, and at some point I'll be, when it's to their pleasure, hopefully we'll get Bob and Ben, and I don't know whether you are on to come or not, but we'll see what how that works and make the case for those. Um, the one thing uh, that I uh, did become aware of that will impact this in the future is that um, the selectmen are, the rule has been a capital project being defined as something costing more than 10000 and and we're to, it's expected to last for more than 10 years. And they are going to probably lower that to more than 5,000 and lasting more than 10 years, with the key thing being more than 10 years. So this is clearly a capital <coughs> project, but that there are, it turns out, often amounts that are in the 5 to 10 range that fit all the requirements and therefore why be sort of, you know, make life difficult for yourself when it really meets the the requirement of capital projects. So I, I, I look, took another look back at the list that Bob had prepared for our last meeting to see if there was anything there particularly that we would have left out that we might have wanted to put in, and I didn't see anything. Um, but so for, you know, they said this was going to become effective next year and whether they were going to have to do something at an annual meeting to make the change or not, I'm not sure. But they just, I asked them about it at their meeting last night. And that's, that's coming in the next year. But for this year, I'll keep you toasted. And my, my goal is to create a three to five year plan, but a, a solid three year plan that each of the capital improvement plan committees of each of the towns can see stuff coming. Mm -hmm. You know, because the one, the one thing that's been in my just in ob observation is that they, nobody wants to see the surprises coming down yeah. the and then and sometimes the surprises cause more frustration than the actual project. And so, you know, I'd love to have a three-year plan. They, we, we have a plan, we could, that could, we have the information that can easily be broken down to three years. And then every year, this, this committee decides the prioritization of that three-year plan, adding the next year on. And sometimes things are gonna skip up based on damage or, you know, you know the longevity of something did not last as we expected, that kind of thing, um, and make that final commit. But they can see, oh, next year they have a heavier thing coming maybe we want to split that over two years and push that up and so that they can be um without the information they can't be helpful you know what i mean and so um it's it, i'm hoping that that will help the town is already in general and in regard to this building in particular <coughs> i think doing a good job of being aware of you know how things stand mm -hmm. and it hasn't uh it's got work to do to figure out you know, a more exact plan, but it's at this point got at least an awareness of the big issues that are around for, like I said, this building and other buildings in town. So I think we've already made a bunch of progress there and it's just pursuing it. Um, the one thing I did want to mention, did want to ask about was that uh, when Bob was here last time, he mentioned, um, I actually, you know, he had a, he had a list he made up of the uh, projects that have gotten done in this building in the last, you know, FY17, 18, and now FY19, and it was actually quite an impressive list of stuff that's getting done. And um, I've made a point of passing that to the selectmen and so on, but there were several items that were intended to be done during this past Christmas break, and I was just wondering if, I mean, for example, here he says, oil take monitoring repair, oil take oil line replacement, exhaust fan gym storage, replace boiler section, and pump. Uh, you got any idea if progress was made on those? The exhaust fan is in. Okay. And I'm actually not entirely sure about the others. So can we? Yeah. How do we? How do we follow up on that? Do you want to? I can shoot you guys an email with the yeah. results of that, and then we also can say it publicly at the next meeting. That would be great. Yeah. That'd be great. Again, just wanting to follow up on this to make sure. Um, 
and then I saw something, I guess, they, well, that's in your report, we'll get to that, uh, on the security system. This, they're this, here right now? They're, uh, I saw their bands out there. Yep. Okay. That's it for that. All right. Uh, let's see. Committees? Yeah. We got enough. Uh, the collaborative? Not yet this month. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Principal's report. Yesterday, students in grades four through six learned how to make bread from scratch. Uh, this is the King Arthur baking presentation where they bake for good. Um, students watched a hands-on demonstration um, and are able are now uh, have kits at home where they will be able to bake two loaves of bread. One will be for their families to enjoy and the other loaf will be donated to the Amherst Survival Center. So uh, students will be baking the bread next weekend and um, the bread will be brought in on Tuesday after Martin Luther King Jr. Day and then we'll donate them to the Amherst Survival Center. Now Ben, you know that I called when you were at that presentation and the secretary said he's down with King Arthur. <laughs> yes. Honest. Making bread. Yeah, so that was a. I was like, yeah, okay, just have him call me that. <laughs> uh, every year we hold a snowflake skate at the UMass Mullen Center practice rink. This acts as a fundraiser for our sixth grade class. Uh, this year on January 1st from 2 to 4 p.m., the event raised $539 for our sixth graders. Uh, surveillance system installation. This started uh, yesterday, Monday, um, and as you know, this was one of our capital projects that we submitted uh, last school year. And uh, the new system will have three exterior and eight interior cameras. Um, and, and on that note, we have been uh, updating and purchasing new go kits for our, our classrooms and as you know there's the um, police safety s safety grant that Chief Dimitropoulos was working on and once we get the final numbers um, from him how much the go kits will cost we'll, we'll figure out how much we'll need to use for the security system because the uh, security system came in a few thousand dollars more than what um, the capital project was for. Upcoming events, uh, tomorrow, singer, songwriter, poet, storyteller, Courtney Campbell will be performing at Sunderland, Sunderland Elementary School. She is visiting all of the elementary schools in our district this week. She'll be putting on three different presentations, a K through two, a three, four, and a five, six. Tomorrow night is also our PTO meeting. The next Monday, there's no school in honor of um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. A week from this coming Thursday is International Night. That's uh, an evening where we celebrate our, um, our school's diversity. And um, I, I made note of it in our last uh, Sunderland Sentinel um, uh, edition that went out. We have students, um, our student body is uh, made up of kiddos who, who were born in 12 different countries and a total of uh, excuse me, nine different countries in a total of 12 different languages are spoken either here at school or, or at home. Uh, kindergarten, our next kindergarten parent coffee is scheduled for Wednesday, January 30th at 8.30 a.m. Um, that should read a.m., 8.30 a.m. Uh, next school committee meeting is February 5th. Each year through our out-of-school time program, students um, from the four elementary schools visit the Soldiers' Home in Holyoke uh, for Valentine's Day and deliver Valentine's Day cards. Uh, I also had an email today from Town Administrator Sherry Patch wondering um, if we could schedule our budget presentation. The two dates she floated out there were February 4th and February 11th. I told her I'd get back to her, but my guess is um, well, the February 4th would be too early because we don't have the full budget yet. And then um, typically it's been the Monday or Tuesday after 
February vacation. So I just wanted to throw that out there to the committee. Yeah. Mondays are hard for me. Tuesdays. 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 Like they meet on Monday. They meet on Monday. Uh, and they don't meet on the Monday to President's Day. Right. So that would be... Well, it can't be the 4th because we're meeting yeah. on yeah, we're we're meeting meeting the 5th. So we, we, we can bring what we got. We got nothing to present. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and... <clears throat> I mean, at least, at least for the past few years, it's always been the Monday after February break. But, um, you know, I, I want to make sure we're respectful of their, their yeah. schedule, their busy schedule during this time as well. I'm actually going to suggest that even though that is basically right after we're going to see the budget for the first time, um, that... You know, in a way, it's probably okay because what we are presenting to them is, if we, if it's made clear that what we're, we're presenting to them is, you know, here's your look at the initial school budget. This is not your look. When he gets, when he has, for example, last night, they had the police chief come in to talk about the police chief's budget, and the police chief is coming in with the police chief's budget that he's pushing for. Okay, if we go there on the 11th, it's not clear to me that's the budget we'll be pushing for because... I'm not sure what this committee will do on the night of the 5th and it might make great progress or it might just love everything you present and say, great, no changes, take it to the selectmen. Um, I don't know, but I don't think, um, you know, maybe it's not a bad idea to just go to them and see what sort of reaction it is there to help guide our thinking, you know, to, to take that into consideration our thinking whether so we the, care to or not. You mean the, the 11th? Or yeah, go ahead and just do it the 11th, as, yeah. as opposed to... So after we've had, we've seen it, we've, we've seen it, our we've, initial talk. Right. Yeah, I mean... But without, know, without claiming to have reached any, any decisions on it. Is that, I mean, I don't know if that's bad politics or well, good politics or politics, you know, maybe you don't even worry about the politics, you're just trying to get to a good budget point down the road. And, right. Um, the, we, It'd be interesting, and I don't know how to approach. We will not have the negotiation numbers by then. We'll have one meeting prior to that date. The mm -hmm. next meeting is on the 13th, where I imagine, I mean, I'm learning this negotiation thing, but the, the first the session where you trade proposals, it's trading proposals, looking for clarity, and then you start working on things. And by the, by the next meeting on the 13th, I imagine that's when big numbers will be we talked about. You mean that we were actually talking about um, percentage increases? I'm just kind of I'm projecting, and by no means being held to it on camera regarding negotiations. But for a timeline <coughs> sense, we're not going to know the largest portion of the budget, which is the salaries and where they're actually going to be. Now we can put in, we can plug numbers in for this committee's sake, and we can do. Right. Um, we could do that part in an executive session, going through the budget and going to executive session to show what the different things will look like in it. But we can't share it publicly. And so I don't know, I, I have to look for some advice on how that, mm -hmm. if uh -huh. this runs on, because, you know, negotiations can take, you know, mm -hmm. the way this one's kind of li lined up, it could take several months. I don't know if you want right. to jump in and how, how that's done. Yeah, depending on how much language, because usually money is the last thing mm -hmm. that gets discussed. Um, usually support personnel wait to see where the teachers are coming down before they want to settle um, and then there's also the wild card of you're not going to see the house's budget until March at the earliest so again chapter 70 I'm going to venture a guess that the governor's chapter 70 number would be the most conservative it has been the last few years um, that the legislature has come up with a higher number and he signed it, so that's a good thing. But uh, he does have line item, you know, veto power. Um, you know, so it, again, we've got to, you know, just kind of well, as we're looking at I guess revenue I, I, sources too. That it, February 11th is early. Yeah, and and you know, the only thing to say is that. It's not as if the selectmen are going to take it then and make it to make their recommendation on the budget at that point. I mean, they were sitting around last year 
first week of April still tossing numbers around mm -hmm. about you know what the town budget was going to be like because at some point you got to post you know right. stuff for the meeting but it was it was running pretty late and um, it would be you know I so I think before I mean I remember last year when and it was basically just a presentation it wasn't a whole lot of discussion okay there were a few questions uh, from Selectman to Patty about you know is this in or that in or something like that but there wasn't a real discussion about you know, either individual significant changes or the bottom line. I mean, sometimes the discussion is purely bottom line, you know, what can we afford? Um, but you're trying to give some justification for whatever bottom line you're, you're showing up with. Um, and it's probably going to be that same sort of thing if we're doing it, whether we're doing it second week in February or fourth week in February. Um, I don't know. Well, maybe yeah. we communicate with them that this is where we'll be in the budget process, yeah. and that if they said that's good enough, that's where we'd like to see it at that point, then yeah. we can meet that one. Okay. As long as we, I don't want to go there and they're like, really, this is what you have at this point, and you know, this is not right. what we, where right. we were last year when you presented to us, which was actually three months later, I mean, three weeks later, you know, right. um, but it, it, maybe there'll be enough where they, but even three understanding weeks. where the numbers are going and that kind of stuff. I mean, I, you know, it's certainly, there's there's really no reason to expect that three weeks later there's going to be a number on the on the union's contract. Well, there, well, they, they, we, quite frankly, we may not have a number on the contract moving forward to bring this budget to town. Yeah, exactly. We'd have to put a placeholder in, and then you put a contract adjustment that. line in there, and that yeah. hurts. Yeah, that hurts. A, that can that can hurt negotiations in one way or the other. Yeah, they're, they're, they're weird ways to do I'm sure it's happened more than a dozen times. Yeah. So right now we're looking at February 11th, or I would suggest February 25th because they're not meeting. And then the Monday in between, I mean, and, and we yeah. can come back to Sherry that I mean, the to fourth, me, the fourth won't even have a budget, the 11th we, we won't even have negotiations, we won't really know anything, the 25th will have a more clear idea, but then leave it back to them, do they want the unclear idea on the 11th or a more clear idea on the 25th? And I, and I would also, I would probably push a little bit to do it later, just because I'm a little uneasy at this point because essentially, you know, with all due respect, we haven't made much progress tonight on the budget, which I thought we were going to make progress on the budget. And um, it would be, um, you know, maybe we, on the night of the fifth, we can get to a feeling, to a place where we're okay, we're comfortable at this point with going before the select board and going before the town, you know, with something that may not be the final, but something that we're, we're, we're we, we got our arguments in line for. And um, I'm and not sure that'd be. Certainly on the fifth, it will be all flushed out. Uh -huh. Certainly on the fifth, if you ask, what does adjustment X look like? We'll do it right there. On the okay. Spot. I and, don't have to go away. And we'll have a back. and we'll have a good narrative about because that's the standard thing. People don't look at you know spreadsheets. Right. Okay. They want to know what are the changes. Right. You know what's a level service budget. Mm -hmm. You know, and then what are either things you're trying to add or what are the problems that are making you to add stuff that. So let me reach out to them. Okay. And as you just remind everybody, open lean law allows you to have debate about scheduling of meetings. Right. It's the one thing you can discuss without <laughs> breaking, you know, quorum there. So um, we can, t we can, t I can ask, this is what we're at. Right. Do you want us here or there? People can chime in onto that, um, of the scheduling of that meeting day. So yeah, that'd, you know, that'd be we, great. we can do all that. So um, I think I was, you forwarded me that email so I can mm -hmm. take it from there and okay. include everybody in there and we'll figure out where we're at. And that way, because at the same time, they want, there's maybe they have a particular reason they want to meet with us earlier. And, um, you, know, I just, you know, we'll see where we're at. <clears throat> so yeah, really, really short one. Um, part of the tree. Um, Going off our the, the last one, we have moved all the files out of Christian Lane, and the um, the parties are getting together now um, to kind of do the closing on that building. So that should be happening. I believe it's next week is when they're when they're looking to do it. But it's really in the attorney's hands of all three sides because there's us, the town of Waitley, and the buyer. Um, as I already said, the negotiation of uh, the collective bargaining is underway, and those are the two. Uh, set of meetings coming up so far that are scheduled for both Frontier and Union 38, so you can have an idea that um, you know where things are at there. And we also have uh, 
we put the bid out for business services for the second half of this year. There was one bid, it was TMS. Um, and they have been awarded the bid, so congratulations. Uh, but they came in at numbers consistent to what they were charging us for the first half of the year. So a, a very fair, um, very fair bid moving forward. And the one thing I don't have on here is that um, we do, well, there's probably a lot of things I can add to this, but um, the uh, bus bid is going to be out by the end of this week. So. Um, is, our, is our goal to get it out this week. So, and with deadlines near the end of the month, um, there as well. So, um, those are the other things coming. Is that for a three year contract? Um, I think we're speaking it as a five year contract. I know we're speaking it as a five year contract. Is our current one five year one? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Executive session. It's only if you would like to go into it. I don't have anything to report to the committee because we've only done ground rules and. Um, I'd like to take a minute just, just to give people a little background. Sure. If people are okay with that. So we have to uh, vote to enter the executive call session. Yeah, and you actually have to read the motion that well. All right. Uh, let's see. You have to read that whole little thing. Pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect, of, with respect to collective bargaining, Union 38 teachers and instructional assistants. To make a motion. So moved. Second. It's also good to clarify that there'll be you'll be closing the meeting, coming back from executive yeah. session that way. Exactly. There will be no upon, votes or any upon, action uh, taken after the meeting. Upon finishing executive session, the meeting will end. So that you know, is effectively the end of the public portion of the meeting. Uh, second. second and roll call vote. Doug? Aye. Maisie? Aye. Keith? Aye. Greg? Aye. Peter? Aye. Aye. And I think I have to leave. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming in. Yes, thank you.